Hello and welcome back to the Donahue Group, uh, Sheboygan County's most prestigious talk show. Can I say that? <laughs> at, <the> <laughs> at least among the four of us, we're, we're so inclined. Um, here today with John Hill, and we'll talk, we'll introduce John in a little more detail in just a minute. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm the host of this uh, delightful group. Uh, to my right, Ken Risto. Across the way with his Republican tie that I just love, can't stop mentioning it. <laughs> further to your right. There you go. <laughs> Much further, further to there my right. There you go again. <laughs> there you go again, Tom Paneski. And on your left. <laughs> <laughs> and on my left, but I'm not sure how much further, uh, uh, Cal Potter. So we're delighted that you can join us. And uh, we'll just uh, some snappy conversation here today, talking a little bit more about the state of the city. And uh, with respect to that, our, our uh, guest today is John Hill. And John, welcome. Thank this you. is a, a, an informal group, if you haven't already figured that out. And, um, poor John is here in his capacity as a defeated candidate. <laughs> uh, but uh, John was one of the five individuals who had put his name in the uh, ring for uh, the um, uh, second district, aldermanic seat vacated by Juan Perez when he ran for mayor. John did not win. Uh, Don, interestingly enough, Don Van Akron uh, won uh, with uh, eight votes. Jack Westfall with five, as I remember. Yeah. Um, you had two, and the other two candidates had none. Right. So you're kind of in the middle of the pack there. And yeah, yeah. I, um, I used to write all these editorials when I was at the Sheboygan Press lamenting the lack of candidates. And so I, I decided to run, and there's five candidates. So <laughs> it's kind of well, be careful. your editorial. Yeah, be, right. or, or be careful right. of what you wish for. Well, all something. of us uh, here, except for Ken, have been candidates for and served mm. in public office, and we are all for having a lot of people I, running. I am too. Except, in except when we're running, <laughs> and then it's very nice to be unopposed. But uh, we think it's a great, uh, a great thing that you that you did indicate interest, and you came to the council. And I thought the the five speeches that I listened to were generally pretty articulate. What's your sense of the result? Don Van Akron uh, won with a, a bare majority. Yeah, I, I thought the um, speeches were good. I, I thought the results were probably a little bit predetermined. I. I I think uh, there had been quite a bit of lobbying beforehand, and uh, I think that uh, the word was out that Don had the votes, probably had the votes, so I wasn't surprised by the result. If you had won, um, what do you think, well, let me just rephrase that. Uh, what did you think the issues were? What propelled you to even want to put yourself forward into a, a political body that I think all of us can agree <clears throat> Well, if there was a honeymoon for Mayor Perez, it didn't last too long. Um, and is, uh, it was about people to Britney Spears. Is <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Very good, very good. Very good. Um, what compelled you to, uh, to take some interest? Well, it's, it's partly because I, I have been wanting to be in, in politics, uh, and you can't do that and be a newspaper man. And, and you're so retired now. I retired in, in October. The first thing I did was work on the Kerry campaign, and... Uh, so I'm, and I hadn't worked on one since uh, Eugene McCarthy, so uh, in 1968. So I'm just, part of it is just the timing, and and part of it is I'm I'm getting married this month, and I so I just moved into the second district. Um, so it just happened. But the issues I, I'm very interested in Sheridan Park, and I I don't think it's a good place to build a police station, and and I think. The message should have been clear from the election that the majority of people don't want the uh, station built there. And I mean, that's one good reason in itself. We had a, a petition last fall with 3,000 signatures on it. And then we had, what, uh, four incumbents turned uh, loss in the last election who supported Sheridan Park. So to me, the people are speaking and they don't want uh, the police station there. But there are other good reasons. I think this, this uh, study that's been done that says it would be more expensive to put it there is another good reason. I think the chances for sharing services with the county are better. And I, and I think the negotiations, <coughs> excuse me, that went on between the county and the city were important. And, and the county would be solving one of its problems in the deal that was apparently a, 
that uh, the county at least thought had been arranged, uh, which would be parking in the area of the courthouse. So, uh, and for, so the, those are very good reasons why I don't think it should have been built at Sharon Park, but those weren't the only reasons that I was running. But uh, that's the major issue at this point. All right. What was your, this is a little slightly different, what was your experience uh, be, to go in front of the council, to call the alderman, uh, since that was your first time doing that? What kinds, have you, had, have you thought about it? Or was well, it was, it was a little daunting, and I think that's the biggest crowd I've ever seen there in the <laughs> city hall, so it was a little daunting. And, and uh, I had to go, I had to speak first, so it was, it was a little bit daunting. And, it, and it's been a while since I've been in Toastmasters. Uh, I was in Toastmasters for oh, quite okay. a while, but I, I haven't been in it for about And I suppose you haven't worn a tie for some period of time, Republican <laughs> no, or otherwise. No, so. Right, right. <laughs> well, you look good, John. I watched well, it on okay. tape. And oh, uh, uh, what other kind of, uh, Sheridan Park will likely be an up or down vote next, next week what other issues were of interest to you in pursuing the position well, just the the whole issue of city finances and and I like the idea that the mayor has to prioritize services and I think the the real I'm the real key now is if we want quality services we've got to find ways to, to share and collaborate and coordinate with other uh, branches of government and uh, so I think that's that's a a major issue right now in, in many areas and so I wanted to work for that um, those are the major issues I had in mind uh, one of the things I emphasized last night was listening to constituents and I, I, I think that maybe the council isn't doing as good a job as it might be able to to listen to constituents in the fact that uh, well if they do go ahead with Sheridan Park, I don't think they're listening very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, one idea I had of, is to hold listening sessions at parks in the summertime. And it's not something new. We used to do that at the Sheboygan Press uh, in the summertime. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, I felt we were more a part of the community uh, at that time when we were doing that. Um, and just for, for everyone around, the, around uh, our pretty table here, um, I note the um, Sheboygan Falls School District Board of Education filled a vacancy on its board with a candidate who had lost by far more than Don Van Akron. Uh, and I understand the situation out there is, is related, to, as I understand it, to some politics and feelings are running pretty high out mm -hmm. there. What are your thoughts about Don being back on, on the council? Uh, uh, defeated, um, certainly not by a huge margin. Uh, in fact, I think, right, Ken, he won his own ward. Mm -hmm. Ward four, lost ward three, and overall had fewer votes. What kind of message do you think it's sending the city um, that the council has voted now eight to, eight to seven, essentially, to, to put uh, Don back in? Well, I first thought uh, it would have been... I would have first thought he would have gone out and said, I served and done well and uh, I got beat, uh, so I'll, I'll step down and let somebody else uh, put their name in and uh, serve the community. I was fortunate to serve the community for 18 years, so I'm not quite sure why he put his name in again, but, uh, but he did. And at first I was disappointed that he won, but uh, he won. I mean, there's enough, he has enough support on council, so. And uh, he still has to run for re-election again in one year, and so maybe John or maybe the other candidate, Jack, will decide to run against him, and then they'll get the citizen vote again. So I think uh, the council picked, and uh, you just work with who's there. Yeah, but don't elections matter? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I just, when I was struck by that, uh, Actually, I did run for, pub, not, not a public office once, but I did run uh, for a union position or association position within the district teachers union and got defeated by two or three votes after a pretty rancorous mudslinging kind of mm. thing that I didn't really respond to. Uh, and as it turned out, the person who defeated me uh, couldn't do the job. 
And so then they looked at me and said, do you want, do you want the position? And I said, the people have spoken, you know. Like, you know, I mean, they just spoke and, and you know, you may disagree with uh, their decision. They may not, you know, they may not have responded to things that were probably not true in my particular case, whatever it might be. And I like to think I had the good sense to say the, you know, the people have spoken, find somebody else. And I just was amazed that that same message didn't evidently take root over on the north side of town. Um, I just don't think the, 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 I don't think the council gets it. I mean, I'm a little more blunt probably than John is. I don't think they get it yet. Um, I think he's absolutely right. We talked about this on a previous show. Four incumbents got ousted, mm -hmm. you know. Juan Perez got more votes in, the, in those four districts than the alderman who replaced the alderman and, and persons. And uh, stunningly, the council just continues to go on its merry way thinking, I guess, that they know better. Well, I think the lines have been drawn very, very distinctly as to who supported, you know, the park and who didn't, and I think mm -hmm. uh, those folks are holding pretty tight, and I think they, they knew Mr. Van Ackeren and they knew his views, of course, and I think that that solidity of that group is still there. But you guys have been in power. New aldermen. I mean, they haven't even served a term yet. Yeah. Uh, Marge and Bonnie and Kittleson and is now Williams. Stephens, has he served a term yet? Well, Stephen yeah. has been on for a while. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's been on for a while. He yeah. lost three. Uh, is there a, or Vander Wheelie, is he, how long has he's he been? He's been around for a while. Eldenburg is new. Um, but they got a lot of new people in. For some reason, they're just hanging on to their first, you know, some other. They haven't really experienced some issues and maybe haven't been baptized by fire yet this, in serving on the council. Well, but just let me ask you this. Um, uh, and you two in particular, having served in public office, what does it take, if you've taken a position and you, you sense that your constituency is really moving in the other direction, what does it take for you to change your mind? I mean, I think that's what Ken is saying, is, right. is that the writing is fairly clear mm -hmm. on the wall, but people, for whatever reasons, aren't changing their mind. I guess I'm interested in what those reasons would be. Well, I, I think politicians, uh, if they have a marginal district where there's a division between parties in the political arena, um, then they listen. But there are people who are in districts where there's so many of their own party, for example, mm -hmm. that if a dog ran against uh, them, you know, they, they, as a that member of that party, that dog would win. It, that's how much they have confidence in the position and holding the position. And I think some politicians, if it isn't because of the competitive nature, just are in office long enough that they do get a little big head, I think, out of it. And they think that they uh, can do what they doggone well please. And they get full of themselves. And so I, I think there are people who uh, listen to the people because uh, they feel that's their job. But there are other people who uh, do it because fear of defeat. And then if you're in a position, like I said, of being solidified by the fact that uh, you're almost invincible. Uh, those folks sometimes are loose cannons, do what they want to do. Uh, we saw that in the legislature. There are people who are from, we call them safe districts. And uh, they took bizarre positions, personal positions, uh, their own personal agendas, and didn't much care about the constituencies that, that, that they were elected for. But in this election, there was, in the mayor's, there wasn't a safe district except for, you know, Shram's own neighborhood where possibly, possibly the police department might be located. One was a tie well, and the, the other one was really close. don't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying is, I, you know, looking at the same numbers that are published in the press as I am, and I'm saying this is a, a mayor who's coming in with a clear mandate, people who, you know, do they think that this issue is going to somehow change or so that people are going to go away in this issue? Because I just don't think they are. I think they're energized. Well, I've to talked that. to some of those folks, and some of them still are talking about, that, well, that, that, that's a vocal minority. You know, they're still fooling themselves that the 3,000 people uh, that signed this position were ones that they, that's all there are out there. They got everyone. And as a result, they don't have to listen, that they can still be very uh, firm in their previous position. Isn't 53% uh, considered a landslide? So if Perez got 54%, he had basically a landslide in this in this election. Well, we, as or we if. say in Sheboygan, he didn't quite schwetz the mayor, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't quite a schwetzing, but it was uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it was it was a substantial victory. You know, there's no doubt about it, and um, and the change. Uh, the defeat of the aldermen who were defeated was pretty stunning. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, surprised, I think, uh, a lot of us observers who just, quite frankly, didn't think that was going to happen. The, the momentum for Perez appeared certainly to be building as, as the campaign went on, but uh, he had a, a, pretty, a pretty good campaign. But um, for Vicki Meyer to, to take down Mike Warner, I, 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 was, was, I was pretty surprising. stunned. So any thoughts on whether um, it was interesting, the, the Vicki Meyer piece coming out that she had been previously convicted of marijuana possession. Um, any opinions as to whether that uh, disqualifies her for serving on public protection and safety? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. In a small town, there you know, there you shouldn't be throwing stones. And, no, that's true. And and that's the reality is when I look at the member, some of the members that are on that commission and some of the public statements they made about people's personal lives, I be real careful. Yeah. I mean, because because in a small town, everybody knows everybody's business, and I just think that this. Uh, I think there was a lot of hypocrisy uh, about some of that. And I think what was interesting was clearly the vote was a no to um, the, the police department and to a certain degree to the, to the current police chief. And, and then to have followed up this whole article about you know, someone having a, you know, the police chief having a conversation in the mayor's office about, well, if you don't withdraw an, uh, an appointment, uh, this bad news is gonna come out. It's got a lot of people in Sheboygan really asking um, about the police department in this community. You know, they, they'll, they'll support the police and they love their police department. They're glad that the work that they do, but when you see this kind of heavy-handed politics, we don't think of ourselves here in Sheboygan as playing hardball like that. And it's got folks really talking. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be hooked up with the, the whole sighting of the police department eventually, too. And then on top of that, you've got the third story wandering around, which is the, the complaint of, you know, excessive force. I think most people in Sheboygan mm -hmm. as they're talking are waiting to see what the investigation is going to reveal. They got an open mind about that issue. Mm -hmm. But all of this is starting to really churn, uh, you know, average folks at, in Piggly Wiggly saying, what's really happening over and, there? And let me tell you that I served on the Police and Fire Commission for five years. And um, in my five year tenure, I don't remember any kind of citizen complaint um, being validated and, and actually proceeding through the commission. And I know some of the members that are currently on the commission, Bob Latree, Jim Pragitz, have actually, those are the two who have been there uh, really a substantial period of time. But I'm not sure the Police and Fire Commission has a whole lot of experience with dealing with what I think is a pretty complex issue. Um, it's, um, and here it is. And I must say, just with no comment whatsoever on any of the merits of the case, that was the most interesting picture that I had seen on the front page of the Sheboygan Press ever, of the young man with the tear rolling down his cheek. And I don't know if it was staged or whatever, but it had some real, it was a pretty powerful photograph from my perspective. So it'll be real interesting to see how the Police and Fire Commission really does handle that because I think it, yeah. it, it's gonna be new for them and it's kind of new for Sheboygan to be dealing with something like this. The, they don't, well, the, the photographers don't stage it. I mean, maybe the, no, the guy know. staged it, yeah. but. No, no, I'm sorry, okay. I didn't mean to impugn the. Actually, the, it's a new photographer for the press. He seems very good, Sam mm -hmm. Castro, I think. Yes, I, yeah, they just got him from West Bend. The, yeah, he, the, the interesting man. photo. What do you think of what the mayor did with the Public Protection and Safety Committee by making the change? I think it was a good move. I think it's good to get some experience on there, and I think uh, Silas uh, Vanderweel is a good man, and I, I, I think that's been, I think it was a mistake not to have some ex experience on there, and mm -hmm. he could have, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he wanted a, a committee that, that w would vote the way he, his position, but I think you could have done that and still had at least sure. one experienced Very person on there, so. And I, and I, so I think it's a good change. Has that committee changed since the time you were on the on the council in terms of what it does? No, uh, public protection and safety. It uh, handles all those major issues. Fire. I mean, all the issues associated with the police department and the fire department. But not the sighting of a station. Uh, I mean, that's why. Well, the, the police chief would have input into the design, maybe into uh, his site, but I don't know that they necessarily are responsible for the the planning and the location, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll provide input. Probably some other committees should be doing that. Let me just start a, a little bit because it's such an unusual parliamentary um, 
process, the three man hold. Did you Sounds folks? Like wrestling, yeah, yeah, it really does. <laughs> and of course, it in, in, politi in, in politically correct times, of course, it should be the three person hold. <laughs> but um, did you? We, folks did, we did used that? it when I was on, uh, on a rarely, but if somebody's absent, sometimes you use it. If there's really, if the person's vote is really needed and the person's absent or two people are absent, you and you know it's going to be close, and you've counted your votes, sometimes you use it, but and rarely use it, rarely. And then the matter has to come before the, the, uh, the council at the next meeting. At the next meeting, and that's the advantage. In other words, okay. it can't be shoveled off to committee and just die there. And <laughs> mm. they're having a special meeting on May 9th um, out of the usual course of things, I think, to dissolve a TIF district, if I'm not mistaken, where there's some timelines involved. Um, do you think that will give the opponents and the proponents of the station some time to organize up? Well, they're going to have a full council for the first time since yeah. last year. So I think the vote is going to be a, a full one that you'll see where everybody stands and whether anybody's changed their mind or not. And if indeed Sheridan Park is reaffirmed, it's going to be interesting to see whether somebody starts talking about recalls because, as Ken mentioned, there, there's they're a feeling be, out there. There are going to be recalls. There's going to From be what I'm hearing in the community, there are people who are watching that vote carefully, yeah. and if people don't change their mind, there's going to be recalls. Well, that was my question. Does the Sheridan Park group, which I think is fairly broad-based, you all have heard about my, my mother-in-law, who is a firm member of the group, and somewhat unexpectedly, um, not unexpectedly, but it just shows you the breadth and depth of it. Are people getting tired of it, though? Um, is there still the energy to keep fighting that fight? I guess that's my question. I, I think it's yeah. taken a new dimension because there's been, as we mentioned before, the changes in the council and the mayorship. If that doesn't do it, if that wasn't the message that was listened to, and then there's a reaffirming of what occurred before that election, mm -hmm. people are going to say, well, what was this all about? I mean, didn't yeah. anybody, as we said, get it? Yeah. I've talked to a you know, some people, and certainly I don't know if they're representative of the entire group, if there was an entire group, but uh, they're getting angrier. Is they're getting right? yeah, they're getting angrier. And if, if the council thinks that this is going to go away, it, it simply isn't going to go away. And of course the happen. beauty, uh, or the beauty or the, 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 the danger of a recall in an aldermanic district is that that's a little more doable. I mean, recalls are, are difficult mm -hmm. as they should be. Um, and it's my understanding at least, and I'm not sure about aldermanic positions, but a, a person who has been elected within his first year is not right. recallable. And I don't know if that applies to aldermanic districts I as well as- I think it's statutorily that you're kind for of everybody. protected for yeah. that year. All right, so, so the brand new people who- um, Yeah, they wouldn't be affected. Right, and in fact, Don Van Akron would not be, and right. one would presume he was certainly one of the staunchest supporters of the, of the park that he, uh, of the park site, he would not, um, change his vote so he won't be recallable and none of the people who, who uh, were sworn in uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but those aldermanic districts, I mean, they're big enough, but they're not, it's, it's a doable thing. Right. I just wonder. The number wonder, of signatures necessary isn't very many at all. Right. And um, Yeah, but who's eligible for a recall? Bonnie Serta is not if she's a first term. No, uh, she's on her second term. First term? No, second first year. year. First, it's the, the year. first year. Oh, you can't the, be recalled in the first, first year. year. Oh, your second year, you can be. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you're, it was your fair term. game after one year. Do you remember when they tried to recall Dan Anderson after the um, the Muth um, really? decision mm -hmm. on that um, oh, that, 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 that nuisance suit? Yeah. And they actually had enough signatures to start the recall, um, but it was the first year. First year oh, of okay. his of, of his term. Now those are six-year terms, so I, and that was my question: whether it's a year, no matter how long mm -hmm. your term is, if whether it's two years or six or ten. Um, so uh, eight older people would be would would certainly fit into the recallable category, you know, depending on. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm just wondering: do people just get tired after a while? And you know, we've fought this battle for a long time, and we just don't want to fight it anymore. I mean. Juan Perez could call all the aldermen and say, come to my office, I would like to talk with you, talk with you as a group. To, well, can as a group because then they'd say that's an open meeting. Hey, you got yeah. to be careful about, <laughs> you gotta be you gotta careful about, about yeah. but, you know, Bring one, them in groups of four. One on <laughs> one, one on one, and just say, you know, uh, I ran on not building at Sheridan Park and I am planning not to build at Sheridan Park and I just need you to let us move forward in some direction, but don't push Sheridan Park because I'll veto it. 
Would be or, wise if you did that. Wouldn't it be wise if you did that? Just each one and just say, I need your support. I need your help. Come on in, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. yeah, but the problem, I, you can't veto the, I mean, just from a procedural standpoint without getting too technical, the vote, the motion, as I understand it, will be to rescind a prior action. So if the, the motion to rescind fails, there's nothing to really veto. Subsequent right? spending bills have to come through, and they have to come through finance committee, and finance committee may not put those spending bills okay. out. And other approvals might have to come through. And along the way, I think he could just say, I'm not going to approve. So in essence, you can, you can approve building it, but you're not going to have the money to do it. That's right. <laughs> I think, I think mm -hmm. you can do that, yeah. 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 Sort of like authorization appropriation bills. Yeah. Of course, the problem with that is the longer you put off the building, of course, the more expensive it is. A and year that's, ago, what he, that's what he can argue. He says, a, I want to build it, yeah. but it isn't going to be Sheridan Park. So the more you fight me, and you're this just mayor, costing the taxpayer more money. <laughs> and this mayor so far is awfully good at framing issues. And if it, the, 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 any, par, any future police department or whatever is held maybe more expensive because the council's delaying, you can bet it's going to be put on their doorstep. Yeah, that's a good issue. Just a couple minutes left, um, and just to segue a little bit, I was interested in Mike Warner's comments um, in the public forum last night. Um, he talked, he made a pitch for the municipal court, and I was surprised because that has been passed, has it not? And it's ready to go, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And I know Mayor Perez has concerns because of the duplicate, what he views as a duplication of services. I think he was one of the people who voted against it back when. Um, but uh, good idea, bad idea? Is it a duplication? Um, I, uh, I think it's I a think good it's, idea. Okay. And it, part of it is because I got a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and it cost me $180 for going 41 miles an hour on Calumet Drive, which I thought, I mean, I, I'm guilty, but I thought that that was excessive. And if it had been a municipal court, it would have been something like $90 70. or 70 And And so I, I think just from a standpoint of the, the fines Ticket involved. Pairs, right? yeah. <laughs> Ticket pairs, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but be, besides that, more money goes to the city. And and the and the courts are crowded. So well, actually, I mean, it, there's three yeah, good reasons yeah, to yeah. to have a municipal court. And really, at one time, that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. in the, in what we've done is period. we've just added all these fees. Your one hundred eighty-one dollar yes. forfeiture, and I only know because I'm a traffic prosecutor, <laughs> and I have all those memorized, um, is a fifty dollar forfeiture. Everything else is mm. is a, is a built-on cost, and the municipal court does reduce that. So can we, shrink, uh, can we shrink the size of the circuit court system? Great talking to you, John. You've got a bright <laughs> political future ahead of you, I have no Thank doubt. You. Thanks to all of you for participating. Thank you.